it was a bad night. It, it wasn't my night and it wasn't my husband's night. Um, you know, I went into that fight with a bad injury. It happened two weeks before the fight. Uh, you know, I never spoke about it after the fight because I didn't want to blame my injury. Uh, I went into that fight knowing my body was still messed up and I still wholeheartedly believed in myself. Um, I do wish that at the end of the day my coach pulled me from the fight as the smartest decision, <laughs> but I mean, I wanted it. I wanted to make history and, you know, I went into that fight telling myself, uh, you know, not telling myself, I went into that fight just focused on making history in the UFC. And that was the one, only, one and only reason why I fought was no matter what, win, lose, or draw, I'm making history, which is not easy to do in the UFC. So, you know, that, that was a bummer that I did lose and my husband lost, so, you know, made history, but we also both lost, so that fucking sucked. But, um, you know, after the fight, we went home and, you know, we were happy, we were relieved, the fight was over, it was a long camp, and we reevaluated some things in our training, and, you know, I learned a lot from that fight, and, you know, fuck her, but, you know, on to the next one. Yeah, I think we're all curious, did you, in fact, follow that bitch home? Oh, man, the staff was on my ass as soon as I left that cage. You know, the, the thing was that was disgusting was, obviously, the girl spat at me and called me an effing puta, but not even our coaches shook my hand or my coach's hand, you know. They were all cowards in my eyes for the night, and I still think so. And, no, I did not get to follow her, but when I see her, she better step up. Do you like it's? I mean, I guess maybe not among casual fans, but among hardcores, that's a pretty well-quoted line. It's become a little bit famous. I mean, do you do you like that? That's a part of your reputation, or do you think, oh, I wish I, I wouldn't have said that? Not at all. I'm real. I'm 100% real. I'm human. If you're gonna disrespect me like that when I gave you nothing but respect, you bet your ass I want to slap the shit out of you after the fight. I mean, what pisses me off the most is you shook my hand at weigh-ins, knowing damn well what you were gonna do after the fight. That right there has coward written all over it. We move forward, as you said, you know, I think we were worried that we, for you and your husband, the emotions, like how that would play off and what that would do to you. Moving forward, is that something that you want to replicate again, or was that a very, you know, kind of challenging thing for you both to compete on the same event? <laughs> Actually, the week after the fight, I mean, I'm setting up myself to get surgery with, with the UFC staff, you know. They called us, and they called us one day for JP for a fight, and then the very next day I get a call, and they were like, hey, do you guys want to fight again on the same night? And we literally looked at each other and we were like, hell yeah, let's do it again. I mean, it was the worst night of our life, but I felt like it was a redo. Like, we can have a second chance. And I have no problem with every time fighting alongside with him. It's our job. It sucks we both lost. You know, the world was against us. You know, I, it was one of, probably one of the worst nights of my life. Like, not only did I get lose, my husband lost, and I got disrespected, and then the whole internet trolls want to just attack me, be thinking I'm shit now. So, you know, if I could have gone and redone it again, we would have. We were actually both scheduled to both fight Saturday night together, but unfortunately, um, after doing the testing at the UFC, which we already knew, he, my husband is not a flyweight, he is a bantamweight, so <laughs> unfortunately, he did had to get pulled from the fight, so luckily, I'm still fighting. Nice. Talk about the goal, I guess, coming in here. I mean, like, it's, you feel like this is a fresh start, like you want to do something new, or is this, I mean, is just building on what you did last time? You can always build on new, but I, I personally, I feel like coming into this fight, I'm a different person and a different fighter. You know, I left Fortis MMA. Um, you know, I came back to my new team here in Vegas, my, not my new team, my old team here in Vegas, where I basically grew up over here. You know, I came to Vegas as an amateur. Um, so I'm back with my old coaches, and I just feel rejuvenated. I feel like a different fighter. Um, you know, I look back at the last fight. Uh, obviously, it wasn't my best night. It was probably one of the worst performances of my life, and, you know, I'm happy that I had that. I, I, you know, after the fight, I kept telling God, I kept praying to God before the fight, why, why am I injured? I've worked my whole life to get to this point. Why am I injured right before my UFC debut that I worked tirelessly and endlessly for? And then after the fight, I was like, I understand why. Everything happens for a reason, and Saturday night, I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna just show the world exactly what I know I'm capable of, and I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna get my respect back, and I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna make myself proud, because this world has no idea, because what they saw was absolute shit in my eyes.
Hey, are you able to say what the injury was, or would you rather keep that private? No, I have no problem with it. Um, it, it was an elbow injury. Um, I was actually supposed to get, um, actually before my contender fight, um, before the contender series got pushed back, I got injured with the same, same arm again, the same elbow. And then luckily the contender series fight got pushed back like a month and a half. So I was actually able to take the time to heal a little bit and then go into the fight. I wasn't 100% even in my contender fight, but I was able to extend my arm at least. <laughs> and then so after the contender fight, um, the doctors were like, listen, you need the Tommy John surgery. And I was like, how long of a recovery is Tommy John? And they said, I'll take a year off. And I was like, no way. And so what we did was the stem cell injection. It worked for a few months and then two weeks out from my debut, boom, my arm swelled up again. I couldn't move it, I couldn't extend it, I couldn't train. And then uh, after the fight, they're like, listen, you need the Tommy John surgery. And I said, you listen. You go out there, you get headlocked for 10 minutes and then you tell me that I need to sit out for a whole year after what just happened to me that night. So luckily I actually got with a different doctor and this doctor was awesome out in Dallas. He actually told me, listen, let's, take, let's do the scope surgery. Let's clean you up inside. You definitely need to do the surgery, but let's see if that will help you. And then, you know, if it doesn't, then we can do the big surgery. And that was the best decision I made was doing that scope surgery because I feel 100%. So is it, are you concerned at all that this injury might just be a reoccurring thing or do you think that this has actually put it away for good now? I, I feel it's put away for a good while now. I mean, I haven't had one problem. And moving back to Vegas, working at the, not working, but being able to get with the PI, the staff, the therapist there every day, I mean, that's like heaven on earth right there. If it wasn't for those ladies, I don't know if I would be this good, but... I mean, I came to them seven weeks ago when I moved back here with a few injuries, small injuries, but obviously my arm was in healing process still, and I've, I feel so good. <laughs> your, uh, your previous opponent just lost the fight. I get the sense that um, that's one you would like back at some point, and her record really doesn't matter about that. Would you fight her again off a loss, or do you need her to win so you can both climb and meet eventually? Karma's a bitch. I don't give a shit what, what happens after this fight. I'm not the type to call anyone out. It's whatever the staff wants, you know. Obviously, I, I want to fight her again, but I mean, I don't have my eyes on just her. I have my eyes on Gloria right now, and then whatever happens after Gloria, then I'll reevaluate. I don't have a manager right now, so I'm very careful with what I say, but I am going to stick to who I am, and I am not the type to call someone out, but Conejo knows w what the deal is with me and her. Last one on this. Uh, you mentioned that she shook your hands at the way in knowing what she would do after the fight. Do you feel that she, she was planning to disrespect you after the fight? Yes, absolutely. She, uh, because I, I was so confused on why she did that. I, I shook her hand on stage. Uh, listen, I am all game for someone to talk shit in a fight. I'm all game for that. Like, let's get dirty. Let's get mean. Let's, let's get the crowd hyped. But after the fight, no matter what, you show respect. That's martial arts. I'm a martial artist. And what she did, I don't want to say I wish I could kill her, but I mean, I wanted to kill her. If the staff hadn't stopped you after the cage, do you think you would have tried to fight her again backstage? Oh, for sure. I would have tried to fight her right there, but the referee was right there. Like, to me, I'm a fighter. Whether I'm professional or not, I'm a fighter. And when you get disrespectful like that, the way I was brought up was you handle that shit right then and there. Thank you. Shan? You uh, mentioned that you left Fortis. Was there a um, reason for that? There was multiple and personal reasons why I left, but um, basically the main reason is what I will come out with is, you know, I, I missed my coaches here. You know, when I talk about coaches, I talk about a team that built me. You know, when I came here, I was... The first time I came to Extreme Couture, I was 18 years old. And then when I moved here, when I just turned 20 years old, I'm 26 now. And when I tell you, I came to them when I was on a three fight losing streak as an amateur. And those coaches, Ray Seffo, Dennis Davis, Eric Nixick, they took me under their wing and we went on a four fight winning streak together. And then, you know, I met my husband and I unfortunately had to go to Africa to go be with my boyfriend at the time and now my husband. But when I called them to let them know, listen, I'm going to adventure off to South Africa to, to try to see if this will work, Eric Nixick and Ray Sefo told me, listen, this is your home here, and whenever you're ready, you come back, and 
I always told them I'll be back, but unfortunately, due to visa reasons, we had to go to Dallas. So, because that's where my parents resided, and um, being with a foreigner, you know, applying for a visa, I had no idea how it worked, but I didn't have any residency in Las Vegas anymore, so we couldn't go to Vegas at first. So now that we're in a position, you know, it kind of sucked the timing. Like, I didn't want them to be like, oh, I lost and now I'm piecing out, but it was, I never wanted to go to Texas, if I'm being honest. Like, I love the team, and because of the team is the reason why I stayed for so long. Like, those are a great group of people there, and, you know, I built a friendship, but, you know, deep in my heart, I knew I wasn't home. Like, when me and my husband sat down and we talk about our five-year goals, our five-year goals were not to be in Texas, so it was like, you know, you have to follow your heart, and unfortunately, this is a very selfish sport, and, um, you know, my husband was my main coach basically in Dallas, and I knew at being at this level, I couldn't do that. You know, he was my my wrestling coach. He was basically my striking coach because we didn't have a striking coach there, so we we held pads for each other. We had we had to build a home gym in our garage. So you know, uh, you know, I left a really good good group of guys over here at Extreme, and it. It's not anything against Safe at Fortis, but they were the people that built me. And when I made that UFC walk, um, before I made the walk, I saw Eric Nixick in the back. And man, it makes me want to cry because it was like I knew I was on the wrong side, you know? Like, it's a fucking weight cut, it makes me sad, but, you know? <laughs> it's like, damn, like, you. You just know deep in your heart, like, I knew I had to go be with them, but I didn't want to hurt anyone. So after my fight, I was like, listen, we need coaches and we need help. And unfortunately in Dallas, it, it, it's expensive there. Like, you know, our, our landlord raised the rent on us like two, two weeks before we moved. Uh, we didn't have striking coaches. We were working so much in the gym to the point where we were working more than almost training. And it, it was tough life over there for us. And we knew in Vegas, you know, it would have been an easier life. The PI is wonderful. I mean, I mean, that's definitely been a game changer for us. And here, we're able to focus on being athletes, and that's it. You know, it's no more Coach JP for me to my husband. So, you know, for me, I was lucky I had him, but I knew he needed a wrestling coach. You know, we're zero and one now in the UFC. I mean, you got to do what you got to do, and we. It was the best decision I made for us. So. Um, your anniversary of your Contender Series fights coming up. Um, can you just reflect on that fight? The Contender Series was a great fight for me, obviously. Um, a great opponent, too. She was very tough. And uh, nothing really to say about that besides, you know, I beat some ass, I got the contract, and I got Dana to follow me, so that was awesome. And, uh, you know, but that's the past. You know, really, the only thing I'm focusing on right now is just going to get my hand raised on Saturday night. And so both of your fights in the UFC have been the featured fight on the main card. Um, do you believe the UFC is putting you there for a reason? You know what's crazy is when I was a kid uh, and I grew up in Taekwondo, I, I've always known that there was something about me, like my aggression. Like there's no fighters in my family on my mom or dad's side. You know, I had a little bit of a rough life growing up. But, uh, you know, I've always just known like when it comes to fighting, like, you know, I show that I'm a fighter. And I think I've showed that even in my last fight. I showed when times get tough, I'm, I'm going to persevere. And, you know, Dana and the matchmakers are smart. So I, I feel extremely grateful that, you know, <laughs> actually after the fight, I told my husband, I was like, wow, I fucked that up. I was like, I'll never be back on the main card, you know? And I was like, I was just like, damn. I was like, I got to go beat this next girl and show them, like, I'm a main card type fighter. Like, I truly believe I'll be headlining a card soon. But, again, my, my focus right now is just on beating, beating Gloria and just getting my respect back and just making myself proud again because I'm not proud. Do you have a prediction for the fight? Oh, there's going to be a finish. I, I don't know how. I don't know when. I'm not that type, but I'm going for the finish. And finally, um... Do you want your next fight to be in front of fans? Yes, uh, of course. I am a fans type person. I mean, even as an amateur out here in Vegas, I was fighting in front of 17,000 people, getting that crowd hyped up. I mean, I am a type of fighter that feeds off that. And so, 
Um, I'm happy that there's going to be a few people here for sure. Um, I definitely like to look out into the crowd and, you know, get them started. Like, uh, we're entertainers. We're not just fighters. We're entertainers. I want people to spend money on me. I want people to spend money to watch me fight. So, I mean, I would love to be on a pay-per-view card. But, again, I know I'm zero and one. Um, so I, I just got to, I feel I just have to go out there and I just have to earn my spot back. And I just have to solidify myself in this division. Thank you. Thank you.